excellent athlete, and uh, it's just incredible what he's going to do for this club. Uh, we don't want to see Sean Rooney in shape either. He's showed the propensity to stick well, to I was, Jay. I was just going to make a comment about that. This is a very difficult time for, for Sean Rooney in, in his basketball game because it's, it's getting down to crunch time, and defensively, uh, he could be a liability, as we see. Foot misses the easy one, and two guys fight for it again from Glassboro. Over-hustling. Samaraya squares for three. Won't go. Nice rebound. Fought four, up and down. And everybody's going for it. Samaralia's got it. He's got a man open in Wiedemann. He goes down the lane. Gives it off to Bird and nothing doing. Wiedemann back with the ball. And there's going to be a foul on Ed Baum. Wiedemann reacted to the foul call, <laughs> John. I think he I thought bet, it was I on bet him. ten guys touched that ball in a matter of uh, five seconds. <laughs> It's going to be a two-shot opportunity this time for Wiedemann. So, you know, if you're looking for the edge with 4.41 to go, there's an opportunity to shoot two at least if you just, go to the just line. Just great, great intensity. And, and I think Glassboro has, uh, has gotten some confidence. Uh, their faces have changed. They seem to have that, that, like a little bit of a lift up in here, uh, a little more confidence or, a, you know. You know that, that, that's what defense does for you, and that's why Charlie Brown plays that man. When you're in people's faces playing hard man-to-man, -man, it, it just lifts the whole team up. It helps your offense. It, it helps your whole attitude. Sitting back in a passive zone, boy, I tell you, you get beat a lot. Wiedemann, a usually reliable, misses the second one, and Rooney comes away with the rebound. 11-point spread. As close as they've been in the entire second half. Four and a half to go, and it'll be out of bounds to Jersey City State. And you're right, John, the defensive pressure for Glassboro was not even anywhere like this throughout the first half. But what a great game on both sides of the ball for both of these teams. A good job. And, and the defense does it again, forces a timeout. Senior leadership here, John. We're going to stay with these huddles here, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to go in with, to both of these huddles as the coach. And uh, right now we're taking a look at Jersey City's huddle. So tell me what Charlie, tell us what Charlie Brown is saying now to his charges. Well, I wish I, I wish it was that easy. Uh, I would have won a few more games, but uh, I'm sure Charlie's first telling them to keep up the defensive intensity. All right, we have a bench. If you're tired, tell me. We'll get you out of there. We'll get you back in. Offensively, he's probably still telling them, take the transition if it's there, but if it's not there, let's start working on our half-court offense. Okay, let's get to the other huddle now and take a look at Glassboro. And Giannini animated, what's he doing? Well, he's, he's again talking about uh, there's no problem with their defense. Their defense has gotten them this close. I'm sure he's talking offensive set and clock management right now. He's probably talking about timeouts, and he's also talking about running their offensive sets in a spread manner and taking the ball to the hole, and let's get to the foul line. Okay, inbounds to Jersey City. Baum gets the ball. 30 seconds on the shot clock for the Gothics. And with Waddleton in, I'm sure they're going to try to kill as much as they can to this 30 seconds. Baum on top of the key. Tries to go down the lane. Reed right there with the defense. Both coaches, I'm sure, also talked about go-to people. They went into Rooney. He kicks it back. Waddleton inbounds. McKevick gets it. Well, there's clock management at its best, John. Use it all up and get a bucket at the end. Back to 13, 355 left. Excellent backdoor move. Rooney gets a block that time and a tie up there. One and one. Ball will stay with Glassboro, but a good job there by Sean Rooney and Samaralia, though, to, to fight for the ball. Glassboro do an excellent job uh, going away from the pressure. They're being denied. Instead of coming out higher in the offensive set, they're just going backdoor. Back on top to Wiedemann now. They're going to have to think about getting it up a little quicker. Burden has a little trouble with it and doesn't get Oh, great. Tap Omar foot. John, one day soon, he's going to earn his spot on the starting lineup. Well, it looks like foot and Burden are staying down in the block, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see Semerario start letting that three-point shot go. Wiedemann has numbers. a lot of people with him. He's fouled. That time he had the numbers, John, but he couldn't read the back of the trailers there. But it's still an excellent play because he stopped the clock. He's going to the line for two, 
And now Coach Giannini, as we see subs coming in, can set his defense. Okay, it'll be a two-shot opportunity for Paul Wiedemann. Sean Rooney checks out. I thought he did a fine job down there in the early going. And, uh, John, you see a, a well, couple he, had, he wasn't even in for a minute. I think uh, Coach Brown reevaluated that situation and got some of his uh, front-line players who are better physical shape in the ball game. Wiedemann, who's usually reliable, John, two in a row. And now you're going to see offensive, defensive substitutes. Well, now Reggie Riggs has had a, uh, a breather. And, uh, of course, we know that he can light it up from the three-point range. Wiedemann makes one of two. He has five. The lead is ten, so they age ever closer, John. Now the clock is their enemy more than their ally here. Just over three to go. Now, if Jersey City just has good clock management, there's really not enough time for Glassboro to make the run. Inside to King. He goes down the lane and makes it. King with a great drop step move. When he goes right, John, it's going to be hard to stay with this young man. Waddleton, another steal on the inbounds, and he's fouled by Wiedemann. John, it's got to be four or five times they've stolen the inbounds pass. Well, again, uh, I don't think they're neglecting the pressure, but what's happening is the Glassboro guards are starting to try to make their offensive move to the ball from the baseline. And there's not enough room for them to work offensively and get free. They should be looking to start from the foul line, if not the top of the key, so they have that entire length to work. And on the other hand, Jersey City State puts Waddleton back in, the senior leadership, the floor general, the man in charge, and he turns around and finds a way to get his team to milk the clock. They had had no milking going on whatsoever. He gets back in this, and uh, Jersey City State has shown some real maturity on that end of the ball. Yeah, he, he just gives them a lot of composure, a lot of floor confidence. Uh, they do a good job, do the Gothics, and finding point guards throughout everywhere, John. Uh, right now, assistant coach uh, looking uh, and checking to see how many timeouts Glassboro has remaining because uh, that depends on, uh, you know, what kind of run Glassboro can make, what kind of flow the game is in, uh, or can they score and must take a timeout to stop that clock and, and uh, perhaps change their defense. You know, John, it's, it's funny when you look down the rosters of these teams, you see the areas, but these two teams here both almost exclusively recruit out of their, in their area. Very few people will come from anywhere near, anywhere far from it, and uh, just shows if you go out and you kick the bushes, there's enough players for everybody and enough good ones for everybody. Well, they say even on a Division I level that uh, <laughs> if, if you look at... Uh, major college football and basketball there's a lot of new jersey athletes out of the state the ones out of the state and we keep quite a few great ones in and uh, a real good job here both coaches to keep their uh their benches stocked waddleton misses it and it's going to stay here and stay with jersey city so the coffers are full john uh, and uh, some young players some older players but uh looks like a, a good situation for both teams down the road Taking Riggs out now on the offensive end of the, the court here for Bob Barrett. We know Barrett's a great stationary shooter, though, John. But defensively, uh, a liability as we send that. Uh, you see him into just yeah, a little run and jump by Glassboro now, and it looks like they're going to uh, going to try to foul to and stop it, the clock. The foul bound will get the two-shot opportunity, and I think that was because Barrett had no fouls, and he comes up checking his knee, John, right away. Well, yeah, but I, I think that was a defensive substitution where he didn't want Riggs to go out and foul and stop the clock, so he inserted uh, Bob Barrett, and now Reggie's back in the game. Okay, two shots for Ed Baum. He has 15 already to be tied for the team lead in points today. He misses his first. Him and Watkins both with 15 apiece. A good effort, and... John Glassboro five players in double figures and they still trail by 13. Well I think the point production uh, we talked about it in the open uh, state obviously going to be in the 80s and that's where they wanted the game. Samurai a good move to get open and he cans a three. He made that was the toughest shot he had to make all game and he and he sticks it down. He has 16, and they're going to give Waddleton a chance for two tries. I think tries. right now, uh, this, is, this is quite interesting. I think Coach Giannini is, uh, is very, very aware of uh, 
Jersey City's 56% shooting percentage no. from the line. He probably came down with it. And on I'll his tell arm. you, if if the score was tighter or there was more ticks on the clock, it would be very interesting to see the end of this basketball game because now they've missed their last four, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about before that. Well, you got to have a weakness somewhere, John, and this is that's why Jersey City tries to get those big leads early. Waddleton gets one of two. He has five, so. I think right now, Glassboro will be happy to trade two for one. One of two, and maybe get a three, and uh, you've picked up two. Samaralia forces another one, gets himself out of position for the rebound. And this is sort of like volleyball right now. Jersey City guys getting rid of the ball as quickly as, yeah, as possible. They're just going to spread the floor. They want Gene Eney must, is screaming at his players to foul Baum. Ed Baum, number 20, and uh, again, if we don't have percentages here, I think team percentages, but uh, I don't know if that's something Jersey City's publishing, John. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're publishing it, but I have it, uh, <laughs> so let, let's talk about it. The uncut uh, version. Eddie Baum is, is 34 for 70, shooting 48% from the free throw line. Waddleton made the first. Danny Waddleton, believe it or not, as a point guard, is shooting 29%. He just made three of four. 29% for Jerome the Fink, 76. Mark McKevitt, 77. Melvin Nelson, 35. Reed misses. There's Burden for the putback. 13 and for they Burden. They need to call a time to stop the clock. Now it's they can't. too late. And, and now there's numbers on the back end. Good deflection by Reed. They, Waddleton with 29%. They're going to continue to foul him. And he's, I again, tell you, that's, Gene that's a foul. at his players. You know, and right now, if I was Coach Brown, I'm, I'm going to be looking for the all cross hand on is that an intentional foul? John, I don't think they're ever going to find a way to change this rule and make it right. It's just going to have to be the way the games end. It's going to be slow. Here's a shot. Danny Waddleton again. He's got three of his last four. He was shooting 29 percent. He's got four or five. He has eight in the parade to the foul line. Uh, made Waddleton a very confident well, shooter. I, yeah, I, I think uh, at this point, you know, you have to go with what the person is doing in this particular game at. And I would uh, foul anybody but Danny for at least uh, the next three or four possessions. Baum fouls. Here we go. It's 143 to go. It's a 13-point lead. John Giannini all over the officials again. And again, Glassboro State willing to trade probably two for one, two for three, John. The opportunity had some misses, but they did want to foul Baum. And yeah, what Charlie I'm Brown, after giving him ample opportunity, has decided to get Mr. Baum out of the lineup. Stefan Beck checks in for the Gothics. He replaces Ed Baum. Who had a great day, 15 points for Baum. He's tied for the lead with the Gothics. Yeah, and, and Stefan Beck, by the way, is uh, 13 for 17 from the line for yeah. uh, shooting about 77%. Baum is tied with the Gothics. Watkins for, with 15 points apiece for... And uh, that, John, believe it or not, right there is an illegal substitution, but we won't touch on that because the clock hasn't started and Baum is back That's in exactly the game. exactly right. It has to be out for uh, at least one tick of the clock. But Coach Giannini is still working the officials. What he's concerned about is, you know, he's getting the call now. As he said, there's only 143 left. Where were you all game? But Reed very missed. difficult game for these officials to do. Reed missed the second one on purpose almost, and now he fouls Waddleton. For Danny Waddleton, this has got to be a little bit more fun than anything. He went in with a 29% average, so it doesn't matter, John. He's way up over the edge now. Well, again, you know, it's it's score. They're up by 12. Uh, there's a lot less pressure on him to uh, to make these shots. That's why I said it would be interesting to see uh, how State would have reacted if it were a three or four point game, and uh, they had to make the free throws. But that's not the case, and yeah. Charlie Brown does not have to worry about that. At well, this John, time. another shot or here, another free throw, and all he has to do is worry about the next game. 84-72. Well, not yet. The there's, there's a minute top. and 32 left. Waddleton reaches double figures with 10. He joins three other Gothics with double figures. Riggs for three. Got it. Reggie Riggs has 20, and that time they get the timeout in. Reggie is really stroking it this evening. John, again, they, they so many good players on this 
like this Glassboro team. They have to get them in and out. Uh, a lot of great jump shooters, too, John. And uh, not a lot of places to put all these players at one time. He needs them all in there right now. And then, but yet, he's got some with some foul problems. We have a short time out here with the score 85-75. The Gothics on top. We'll be back with the final 124 right after this. through the School of Arts and Sciences and the School of Education and Professional Studies. Jersey City State College offers 33 undergraduate degree programs in the liberal arts, education, health sciences, social service professions, and applied technologies. The Graduate Studies Division offers 14 graduate programs as well as advanced certification programs in education. Our student body is a rich mix of high school graduates, non-traditional older students, part-time students, and foreign students from 55 countries around the globe. Most are the first in their families to receive a higher education. The new corporate scholars dorm, the recently renovated Bodra dormitory, and campus apartments are home away from home to 266 undergraduates. For all students, residents, and commuters, campus life is busy. The college is a major cultural center for the surrounding community, hosting countless performances, theater productions, gallery exhibits, conferences, and special events. The Division of Athletics coordinates a complete intramural and intercollegiate sports program We're back here at Jersey City State College in the gymnasium. It's going to be Jersey City ball, and they have to kill 124. Good three-pointer by Riggs. John, we were just talking about the fact with Riggs and a lot of great jump shooters, uh, you, you do have to go with an inside-out game. Usually, the Glassboro, they all pick up the slack for each other. Not the case tonight. Well, it's not the case tonight because, because again, I hate to reiterate this, and, and we've been talking about all game, of the great defensive pressure. It, uh, it makes good shooters put the ball on the floor, perhaps a little bit more, take a little bit quicker step, just change the flow of their shooting. And it, it creates a lot of turmoil, and any kind of minute change changes the effect of your shot. Well, as you mentioned before, John, in another game that we did, just having to go out another six inches alters your jump shot tremendously. And shooting range, and I think that's, that's Eddie Baum. Eddie Baum's a great, great player. As long as he's taking the ball 12 to 13 feet and in. Watkins will have to make this second one uh, to give him an 11-point lead. They're not that many shots away, John, if, if Jersey City doesn't fill up the foul line. Neil King recovers. And it's going to be another two-shot opportunity for Neil King. And uh, that's just an opportunity that uh, slips again uh, through the hands of Glassboro, missing two foul shots and, and allowing them to get the offensive glass. Right, John. They could be, with this foul here to King, they could be thinking about having coming down for their second three-point attempt and what they just did. Instead, uh, there's a chance for King to open it to 12 points here. Neil King, again, another transfer in for Jersey City, and he's done a great job as he's getting his feet wet here at this level. And, uh, John, sometimes we touch on it, but I think it takes even the Division I transfers a while to realize that it's pretty physical down here. Uh, it's not only physical, there's a lot of learning that's going on. It's intense. Uh, games played a little differently. You, you adjust for a, sometimes lacks of natural ability by all five players. Riggs way up for that three-pointer. There's Watkins, the rebound. Ahead of the field, Melvin Nelson. He's fouled. And you know something, John? That may be the single best thing to happen to Melvin Nelson today. Coach Charlie Brown had said he's hoping, hoping, and hoping that Melvin would realize that his leg was all right. 
He went down that time in awkward position, awkward stance. Maybe just now he'll get that up feeling that, hey, I came down on this in a bad way, and I'm back up here on the foul line. That's a good point. Okay, five fouls. That on Reggie Riggs as he went up. And uh, again, no malicious this meant whatsoever in that attempt to block the shot and keep Not the basket out. Not at all. And if obviously if you're Glassboro, you want Jersey City to earn it from the line. Melvin Nelson for two now. 87-75, a 12-point bulge for Jersey City, and Nelson gets the first. Nelson has three. And again, a quiet afternoon for this young man. And now and now he's he's uh, 14 for 38. Make it 15 for 39. And I tell you, you know, you just think about, like I saw, it's all mental. He's got an excellent, excellent release. Ricky Myers from three. Won't go. Inside, Reed is blocked by King. Shea Harvey in the game. Myers misses. There's Burden's put back. He hurried it a little bit. Baum is fouled that time by Dwayne Reed. And uh, 42 seconds left, a 14-point lead, John, and they're still going to let Jersey City parade down there. Just about done, I would gather here, John. You're going to give it the, it's overtime? I, I, uh, I think it is. Jersey City got the numbers up, another one of your keys where the numbers are. 89 points, John, approaching 90, and really where they want to be. Uh, mo most definitely. Uh, State can uh, get to the hundreds real easily, and uh, I would think that uh, the teams in this conference have better get out and rescout re the Jersey City State Gothic. Isn't that a truth? Just to get that extra depth of two players is an amazing situation. Uh, just sometimes an excellent player, one player mid-year right. changes your entire team. Yeah, it just ups the intensity sometimes at practice. And then by upping that intensity at practice, it makes it better for Charlie Brown's group. He gets two new players. Now you have five guys looking for their playing time back, not to mention the bench personnel who are really looking for their it time. It makes you work at practice. Right. And also it gives the coach some flexibility in adding another man to uh, the rotation of the game. Not to mention a new look. Not to mention <laughs> all the athleticism. <laughs> yeah. Baum makes the second of two. He has 16 to lead all scorers for the Gothics. The leading scorer tonight so far, Reggie Riggs with 20, so he's out of the contest. Barrett having some trouble with the ball. Myers tries to get it up. Baum with good hands to knock it away. 31 seconds left in this one here at Jersey City, and the Gothics lead by 15, 90 to 75. Myers for three, won't go. Rebound to Darren Watkins. And ahead of the field, Melvin Nelson. The alley oop to Neil King. King that has brought it down. And they brought, they planned that one, John. You saw it coming the entire way. Omar Foote for three. Snope two is on the line. Foote has 12. And we're going to see what the call was here. Myers calls time. They grant him the timeout. And he's all out of timeout, so it'll be a technical foul. Technical foul called on Glassboro for taking an extra timeout, so it'll be a two-shot plus the ball opportunity for the Gothics. And you can't blame Rick Myers for that one. You want to have the foresight, but it's been an up and down second half for them. Well, it's, it's not a crucial timeout situation. Timeout situation, but again, you know, as a coach, you're constantly teaching, and, and the ball club, and the players on the floor should be aware of all situations. John, this will be three in a row now for Glassboro. On the, on, the, on the law's side, do you go in, do you shake it up, or do you just go back and break it down the basics? Well, you know, the, the conference is so tough on, on the road, and uh, Trenton played a, uh, a, a slowdown. If, if you look at the schedule, it was a very difficult week for John to prepare because Trenton will look to slow down the game as they did by winning 46-45 at Trenton. And then you come three days later to a, to a team that just wants to move the ball in, uh, at jet speed for the entire 40 minutes. Well, so, uh, you know, it, again, the old adage is you have to win at home, and if you can win on the road, you got a shot at getting into the playoffs. Well, Darren Watkins will be immortalized for that air ball on that first foul shot, John. He'll have to deal with that in Jersey City this week. 
inbounds to Watkins, and he just pulls it back out. And Jersey City with the long three at the end. That'll do it. The Gothics with a nice win, a 93-77 win over the profs of Glassboro State. And, uh, John, a lot of the things that you called, the keys for this game and the factors came to light, and they all fell in Jersey City State's favor. Well, again, that's that's just a matter of of, uh, of getting your team into the tempo and, and executing your game plan. And, uh, you know, it's just so tough with, with uh, Jersey City's overall speed uh, to to just negate that pressure and 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 get yourself into an up tempo game. And as I said, you know, we've seen Glassboro before, Bob, and and Glassboro can push the ball up and down the floor. We know that. But it's the forte of Jersey City and, and, and Coach Brown has been winning with that type of style for a lot of years. A real big win for Jersey City. They put their stamp out that they're here for real, John. This could probably be a matchup, one of the semifinal matchups in the conference playoffs if all things fall well. And it well, was you a know, good it's, one. It's interesting because uh, our last telecast before the playoffs, you know, the same two teams at the borough. Well, I'm wondering why you say that, John, because you know when you do it right, I always let you know it could be a great one when it comes down. So the final score here, 93-77. Jersey City comes out on top. Jersey City goes to 11-3, 6-1 in the conference. Glassboro to 10-3, 6-2 in the conference. And Kane still on top undefeated. I know that. I think we're going to start seeing the teams sort themselves in, in the top uh, top half of the division and, and the bottom half of the division. And uh, obviously these two teams, Glassboro will be on track because they have much too much talent to let it get away. Uh, but of course Trenton now has uh, built some confidence in, in beating one of the top teams. And now it's going to be a matter of, uh, of scheduling and taking each game, game at a time, and, uh, and just executing your system. It puts a lot of worry back into some people who thought there was some easy parts of the schedule or Jersey City was three and three at one time, I think, John, maybe a, you know, five and three or whatever, and uh, now they're on a serious roll. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, back to the schedule, Glassboro um, will be at Kane, or excuse me, uh, will be home at Kane on Tuesday, the 21st, and then going to Salisbury. Now, Salisbury, is rated uh, one of the top 12th in the country, I believe. Yeah, 12, and, and also top three or four in the region. So, so the next two contests are very, very crucial. It doesn't get to be any easier for either one, and New Jersey Athletic Conference, as we talked about, John, one of, if not the top conference in the country at Division Three level, uh, forever sending teams to playoffs. They beat each other to death half the time, and. Uh, make it tough on some of the real good teams to get any farther because they come out with losing records. But once again, here at Jersey City State, Fry's Gymnasium, the final score, Jersey City 93, Glassboro 77. We'll be back with winning coach Charlie Brown and our player of the game right after this. Tonight, Dolores had a few drinks, did some crack, and ended up another tragic story. Only she doesn't know it yet. Okay, welcome back here to Jersey City State, where the Gothics have come away with a 93-77 win over the Glassboro State Prof. Bob Levline, John Adams with head coach Charlie Brown, and our player of the game, Darren Watkins. Why don't you find out how Coach Brown feels now yeah, from Charlie before. Charlie and I were just talking, and he said, you know, more people have got to see Division Three basketball, especially in this conference. And you're right, but I think the turning point of, of this game, anyway, was your tremendous man-to-man -man defense. Well, you know, I told the, the, the kids in, at, before the game that what wins games is defense and rebounding. I think we did both tonight. I thought we had, did a tremendous job defensively. You know, they've got an excellent basketball team. They really banged the boards, and, and, and I was just so happy and so pleased with the way the things came out. Well, I know, I know there's not much time to savor. Uh, what's next for you? Well, uh, we've got Ramapo. They beat us twice last year. We've got to go to Ramapo. And in this conference, you can't overlook anybody. You know, we have a big three or four in this conference, and a couple of the teams are down this year. But, you know, you, John, you've coached here before. You know these are the games that you've got to look out for, the teams that you're supposed to kill. Were you happy with uh, King and Rooney? Uh, much so. You know, Sean's has only had like two or three days of practice. He had a couple of big threes that really got us out early. 
Uh, Neil King is just a monster on the boards. He's an intimidator, and uh, both guys haven't played really basketball in two years, so that they're a little rusty. But when these guys get that rust off, then we're going to have a real fine basketball team. Thanks for your time. Good luck the rest of the season. Let's turn it to the people who make us look.